Welcome to Iceland, where a seam in two tectonic plates lets lava run free, creating unforgettable landscapes, like lava fields, volcanoes both dormant and active, some of them topped with glaciers. Let's start in Reykjavik, Iceland's capital, where most of Iceland's 330,000 people live. It's picturesque and touristy. We visited in August, so it was a time of long days and warmish temperatures. Perfect for rambling around this very walkable city. There's the Lutheran Church, a checkpoint you certainly can't miss, one of many sidewalk restaurants, and lakes and parks right in the middle of town. But visitors head out of town, of course, where a ring road takes you around the circumference of the island. Along the way, you can pull over and see many of Iceland's waterfalls up close. Here's one that cuts right through solid volcanic rock. And here's one you can walk around behind to get a different perspective. You will get wet. The most famous waterfall is the Golfus, called the wildest in all of Europe. Thousands come here every year. And geysers, yep. They're here as well. On the southern shore is a black sand beach, topped by cliffs and edged with volcanic basalt columns. The cliffs are a popular launch site for paragliders. Oh, that reminds me, wanna go flying? Yeah, me too. Flying clubs are popular in Iceland, and there are several of them at the Reykjavik airport. Here's one, the Geirfugl Flying School which has a club also. You can rent a diamond, say, and fly with an instructor over some of the most surreal terrain ever. On one trip, we went to a fly-in at the Mulakot airstrip, where we caught up with Haraldur Diego, president of AOPA Iceland. The pilot population in Iceland is quite high and I think we have the world record for uh, per capita licenses. We're celebrating our 70th anniversary this year as AOPA Iceland. Uh, the fly-in has been uh, going on here for around 30 plus years. Uh, we got into this weekend because it's a long weekend, so we have a three-day holiday. People go out camping in Iceland. Pilots come here. We asked him what issues face general aviation in Iceland. We wondered if any airports face closures, an ongoing problem in the United States. Currently, the uh, majority of the city council in Reykjavik wants the airport gone. It's understandable that they want this precious land under land development, but this is an airport we're talking about. You don't move an airport, you have to build another one. And right now, there, there is no one coughing up money to build a new airport. On the bright side, AOPA Iceland has been central in radically lowering the cost of flying. Because of our members' initiatives, we got it through the tax authorities that the laws were very clear. Gas used for airplanes should be exempt from road tax. So we get the road tax now reimbursed based on fuel receipts. We're flying for about five bucks uh, a gallon, and that is a major breakthrough compared to around 12 bucks for the gallon for 100 LL aviation fuel. And AOPA Iceland has also successfully managed regulatory issues that span European borders. One of the things that happened was that you know, I got a little eager in making regulations harder. So it was really hard for us to fly. Even. And not only with their worthiness, but also certification and uh, maintaining your, your uh, proficiency. This is one of the reasons why it's very important for us to maintain our membership within International AOPA and uh, work closely with them. And finally, does Diego have any advice on what to expect should you fly in Iceland? Expect weather and expect fun, because this is pretty much open airspace. We don't have any 
TFRs or uh, restricted air spaces. Well, we have them, but they're, they're, they're not in your way of having fun. So one thing's for sure. If you do come to Iceland to fly, you'll have the chance to see some amazing sights and meet some spirited enthusiasts advancing general aviation's cause, all while having the time of their life. Tom Horn, AOPA Live.